Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Recording Tip Every Wednesday series. And in this episode, I'm going to be covering different types of microphone. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about condensers, dynamic, and compact microphones. So let's get started with the most common dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones are also known as the moving coil microphones, and they are generally used on loud sources. You can spot mic with these, but they're not really good for ambient micing because of their poor frequency and their poor pickup range. You can use it really close to the mouth, but you can't use it far away because it won't capture the sound as you want it to. It'll just be very muffled. And it's very strong, which is why it's used mainly at venues or concerts and stuff, because if you drop it, it's not going to do anything because the top of this is dented so badly, and I'm surprised it still works. These are generally used on drums, for example, snare, toms, kick drum, rock singers, guitar, and bass cabinets, because bass cabinets are really loud considering the bass frequencies, which get to microphones a lot more than the high frequencies. And these are really, really strong with sound pressure levels as well. I mean, some of these can go up to, say, 150 SPL sound pressure level, which is really loud for a microphone to go. The second microphone that we have is a condenser microphone. You can get two different types of condenser microphones. You can get a large diaphragm and a small diaphragm. Large diaphragms pick up more of the bass because they have a large diaphragm. And you'd normally use these on like vocals because you get a full range. Guitar, you can use them on. And you use a small diaphragm condenser on things you don't want to pick up too much bass. For example, guitar again, piano, overheads, um, hi-hat, shakers, tambourines, whatever, claps even. Anything you don't want to capture too much bass of, you can use a small diaphragm condenser. Some condenser microphones have switches like these, which allow you to select the different pads, 10 dB and 20 dB, or a high-pass filter of 75 and 150. That's really useful if you just want to record something quick and you don't want to go into your Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever, and start fiddling around later on. The third type of microphone that I'm going to be talking about is a contact microphone. These clip onto the surface of an instrument, and it uses the body of the instrument as a diaphragm, and it captures the vibrations through this bit here. Now, you wouldn't generally use these on their own because they are really bad quality sound. It's like, if you record guitar with them, I'd only use it for a neither demo, I wouldn't use this, because it is a really bad quality sounding microphone. So you can combine it with a condenser microphone and it, you can get a really defined sound with the high frequencies, but anything else, you don't really want to use this, especially on violins. If you use this on a violin, I'll find where you live and slap you. So that's it for this episode. Let's just cover over what we've learned. Dynamics are strong, used at venues and concerts. They are really useful for spot marking loud sources, for example, guitar cabinets and bass cabinets. Not really good for ambient miking. Condenser microphones are really fragile in comparison to the dynamic microphones, but they pick up more frequencies mainly used in the studio, good for ambient and spot miking, but do not put them in drums. They're normally used in guitars, vocals, pianos, you name it, any instrument. Um, contact microphones you put on the surface of an instrument and it'll pick up on the vibrations. Really bad sound quality and you'd probably only use it if you're working out a song for the first time. So thanks for watching this episode of Recording Tip every Wednesday and I hope to see you next Wednesday for another tutorial. Thanks for watching.